Hello, this is Ron Clark. I come to you today to present my new book, The Book of Aries. Magic of Essential Meaning and the Path of Brilliance. Uh, this is, for me, a, a very important work. I have been sort of going around the edges of describing the magic of essential meaning over the years. Um, and this is the first time I put the whole thing down in writing for, for you. <laughs> um, uh, it's the first time, as far as I know, the magic of essential meaning has ever been put into writing in a book. Okay? It's existed forever, I'm sure. Um, but the first time that it's in written form. Uh, and it's, it's taken me probably 30 years uh, of learning um, how to present this magic in this form. Uh, and it finally came to fruition. Um, I have been planning for ooh, probably about the past year to actually write the book um, and I've been really intensively trying to discover how to write the book. My videos have been an extension of that. Uh, my last book, uh, Love Letter to a Dying World, was certainly a part and led me to finally being able to write this book. And then the creation of the Aries Golem played a big significant role in the writing of this book. Uh, during the tuning, uh, the final creation of the Golem is when this book sort of wrote itself. It was all like laid out for me uh, exactly what needed to be said and the way it needed to be said. Um, so writing it was actually a very quick process. It's only 78 pages in total. Um, as usual, um, my writing style is very concise and to the point, and I don't waste a lot of words in saying what I need to say. Uh, the book is designed for the advanced student of initiation to hermetics. It's like PME and KTQ in that sense. It's what comes after initiation into hermetics. And so, for sincerely, sincerely working with this magic requires uh, step eight, at least. You have finished step eight, because uh, the work of this book sort of mirrors uh, that of step nine and ten in uh, Initiation into Hermetics. Part of it mirrors that. Um, so, the magic of essential meaning. Um, this is primarily perception. It's the magic more of perception than doing. Doing is a big part of it, but the major part of the work is refining one's perceptions of essential meaning. Um, it also, well, let me look at the, the table of contents here. It really will give you a good idea of what is in the book. Um, I start out with an introduction, introducing a few concepts like um, the Catholic brilliance, because that plays a big role in the magic of essential meaning. Um, and then I talk about the structure. Um, this is basically the, the Groff tree of life. Um, uh, I divide it into seven stations, as it were, of awareness that we are working with in the magic of essential meaning. Um, and I go through a process of preparation, which is rooted here in that structure, and uses a lot of the material that I wrote in my last book, Love Letter to a Dying World. We use the same process of developing uh, awareness. But here, 
in this book, it assumes basically that most of that awareness has been developed, and the two primary areas of work, of preparation for learning the magic of essential meaning are uh, the connection with the I uh, and the perception, direct perception of essential meaning. Now I've done a whole video on essential meaning and perceiving essential meaning. Um, so it's an outgrowth of that. And it's what we do with the magic of essential meaning is we refine our perception of essential meaning to where we are able to perceive the particulate essential meaning. Uh, when we see the essential meaning of anything, it's really a conglomeration of various essential meanings. And we don't really perceive those little bits individually, but we perceive the whole. And the whole is a gestalt, you know. It affects us in a specific way. What we have to do with the magic of essential meaning is refine our perception until we see the different components in a thing's essential meaning. We are able to, to perceive particulate essential meaning, the micro bits of essential meaning. And we have to come to know those and uh, see them in things in the universe. And eventually, in the magic of essential meaning, we emulate those essential meanings. Essentially, we become uh, the essential meaning, and we radiate the essential meaning, thus, you know, affecting things around us, and we can manipulate essential meaning in much the same way as we manipulate fluid, say. Um, on the way to the magic of essential meaning, we go through the path of brilliance. Let's something that I wrote many years ago, um, but I've refined it here, to present it as a workable system. So the first part of this path is um, working with the Adonai light. And I talk about the Adonai light, the rainbow-hued Adonai light, and the magic of yod heh vav -Hey adonai That is all about the Adonai light. The Adonai light is a type of light that only humans can generate because of our structure of awareness. Everything has its own type of light that it generates, and the Adonai light is what human beings um, generate. So this is a first step, because generating the Adonai light relies upon a clear channel between the I and your mundane self, your physical body existing in uh, the now moment of time and space. This is what generates the Adonai light. What generates the light of any creature is making that connection between the I and the present moment. So the first step in this magic is clearing that channel between I and mundane self, mundane existence. So the first thing we learn how to manipulate is the Adonai light. And this is a somewhat different way of generating the Adonai light than we do in the magic of yod heh vav -Hey adonai uh, That is more mystical, in a sense, um, than this is much more hermetic, you know, it's much more scientific. You know, we get real down to the, the brass tacks of, okay, we make this connection between the I and the mundane itself. Then comes the process of learning how to generate the Catholic brilliance. Now, this is something else entirely. It's a universal light. It exists everywhere in everything. The Catholic brilliance uh, is generated in the path of He, the, the emperor in Tarot. It's the connection between Kether and Hokma, um, that shift in awareness between I and, whoa, I am, okay? That connection, that shift in awareness, we have to focus ourselves into and make for ourselves that shift of awareness that brings the Adonai light into our, I mean, the Catholic brilliance into our awareness 
And then we bring the eye down through the layers of awareness till the eye exists right here now in my body. That is when the Catholic brilliance just erupts and you have access to the Catholic brilliance. Now there's a lot of work with the Catholic brilliance in a very Bardenistic style. We first generate it through ourselves and we learn to manipulate it, to shape it very much like working with the fluids. Um, and then we start drawing it from the universe directly. So there's always a ready supply of uh, Catholic brilliance to work with. Um, this is a major part of the magic of essential meaning because we use it, the Catholic brilliance, to open a form if we are going to insert an essential meaning into it. We open it with the Catholic brilliance then we insert the essential meaning basically. Um, so there's a lot of work building up to that point where that is even able. We are even able to do that. Um, so the, it goes opening that channel, generating the Adonai light, and then generating the Catholic brilliance. This is basic preparation for the magic of essential meaning. So the first step in the magic of essential meaning proper is perceiving the particulate essential meanings. And the next step is learning to emulate them. Um, this is a form of emulation magic, um, where you essentially uh, draw the essential meaning into yourself and begin to radiate it. You become the essential meaning and in that way, you affect your environment, okay? That is the first stage of the magic of essential meaning. Then, we learn to influence through the projection of essential meaning, either particular essential meaning or a conglomerate essential meaning, a complex essential meaning. Um, this is things like uh, influencing a person with essential meaning, influencing an object with essential meaning, uh, influencing an environment or a situation with essential meaning. Very simple process at first of learning to basically radiate an essential meaning and shift between essential meanings. The next one is creating with essential meaning. And You could do all sorts of things with essential meaning. Um, it's much more versatile and powerful than working with the fluids, for example. It's a step above the fluids. Um, uh, I take you through several examples uh, of influencing and creating. And we're going to work, work with a small crystal um, or amulet of some kind and experimenting with different projections of essential meaning into it, cleansing it, presenting another essential meaning, etc., observing the effects that we create, etc., until we perfect our abilities with the essential meaning. Um, okay? And the final uh, chapter of essential magic of essential meaning and the highest form of the magic of essential meaning is creating life with essential meaning. And th this golem is an example. This is an alive creature with uh, an independent conscious awareness. And so I take you through that process um, and the, um, the very end of uh, this book is uh, my tale of the creation of this golem as an example of creating life with uh, the magic of essential meaning, what it is capable of. It's uh, a very, 
very powerful um, magic. On, uh, it's very much like Kabbalah, Barden's Kabbalah, um, but just sort of a different approach to creation using uh, these universal forces um, that are creative. The Catholic brilliance, which basically is what generates essential meaning. Gen essential meaning emerges in Hakma out of the Catholic brilliance. That is that descent of awareness from I to I am. That's the Catholic brilliance. And it is infinitely creative. And it is Aries, hence the book of Aries. The letter He is that first path in the tree of life. It is the most creative moment in the tree of life. And that's what the, uh, the image of the emperor is trying to convey. It is a crowned, a crowned kether, awareness looking at a globe, you know, a sphere, a clear sphere. It is looking into the universe of essential meaning, okay? Um, and it's a very creative, expressive energy, the energy of Aries. Aries energy is just whoosh, it's just manifests itself instantly because that's what it must do okay and that is the Catholic brilliance it is oh, incredibly creative energy I use it often and the things that I create to you know help in that creative process so I think this is the last book I'm going to write. It's, it feels like all that I need to write. Um, but <laughs> my previous two books felt like they were the same way. Uh, my permutations of the tree, when I talked about the Gra tree of life and the 182 gates and working those gates, that was for much of my life, uh, you know, the culmination of a lifetime's work. And then, years later, about ten years later, I wrote uh, uh, Love Letter to a Dying World, just uh, three years ago now. And that felt like the, the end, you know, like I had finally said everything I have to say. And that this feels exactly the same way, except that this is really the culmination of about 30 years of, of work, um, which has been pretty much all of my work. Um, so, there is stuff in here for someone who is not at step, at step nine in initiation to hermetics, uh, the work with the eye, of course, and with the perception of essential meaning. These are things that anybody can do. The perception that anybody can do. Clearing the channels, getting that channel flowing between the I and the mundane level of self. Anybody can do that. And that's very powerful magic in and of itself. And then add into that the perception of essential meaning. And, uh, this is really the highest uh, level of perception um, that any creature can achieve because it is the very building block, um, building blocks of existence. Um, yeah, this is all pre presented in... There is no religious context in here at all. This is pure hermetics, the, the sort of scientific, uh, if you will, um, type of hermetics, like initiation into hermetics. 
Um, yeah. So, I hope you will enjoy. It comes in paperback um, and hardbound and ebook. So, <laughs> all the usual suspects. So, well, that's it for me today. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.